Hello, and welcome to Horror Movies and Shit. I'm your host, Jim, and with me as always is... Mark. And we have a few special guests today. Who are you? Brenda. Nobody. Hello. <laughs> See? <laughs> Waving doesn't work on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if you had video, we all did. It, it would be. We have our significant others here who refuse to uh, speak. You don't oh. want me to talk on that. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very special episode, Jim. Why? It is, because we are currently at Spooky Empire in Orlando, Florida. Drinking. What is Spooky? It is a horror convention, Jim, that has been going on for maybe 15 years. Close to it. Yeah. And you've um, been coming for how long, Mark? Well, probably 10 years at this point. No, it's been 13. More? Wow. 13? Yes. Oh, God, See, fantastic. Go. Yes, you are. The founders, almost. Yeah. I've only been coming for five years, maybe six. A little bit longer. No, five or six years. A little, a little bit oh, Pardon me, Ray's telling me I'm wrong, as usual. <laughs> so, Ray, um, what are your experiences at Spooky Empire? I'm tired. That that's about, that's, that's the that, most. That's the succinct. That that's the typical Ray response. He's tired. Brenda, you're the newbie. This is only your second time? Yes. Technically, the first one, I wouldn't count like this one. Right. It's the first big, big one. Because you came to the one in the in summer yep. the first time. Yep. It was like nothing compared to this. So what do, tell us about your experience. What do you think? Super fun. I love all the costumes, the art style that they use, the ambiance, the different rooms, the everything has been amazing so far. Um, I'm tired. But it's good tired, and it's the kind of tired you want to come and do again. So I'm kind of sad I'm only coming today. Oh, now it's recording. I don't know how to work your fucking phone. <laughs> you, and you're the IT expert. It's, it's an Apple. Nobody fucking uses Apple. It's Snapchat. Fuck. Snapchat's the same across oh, any phone. Apple. I'm not a 13-year-old girl. I don't know what Snapchat is. You're on TikTok, you fucker. <laughs> so are you, dick. I'm not on TikTok. Your voice is. Okay. Talk oh, okay, not by choice. Talk about the convention. Come on. Listen, Linda. Um, a few boos from the crowd. <laughs> Boo. <Whatever. laughs> that was an exercise. Talk, three talk about the convention. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Wrap it up. Dude, nobody can see your face at me, Jim. They don't need to, just you. They can't even hear your tone. Jim, Jim is giving the stink eye. Yeah, a right. little bit. So, Mark, tell us about the beginnings of Spooky when you first started coming. What was that like? So, my wife forced me to go because I'm an introvert. Uh, Are you now? I am. I, I am very much an introvert, as you know. Oh, yeah, totally. Right? Everybody? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, so, I was a little hesitant to go, but, you know, she made me go for the first time. And now I go more than she does. What is it that keeps bringing you back? Um, so growing up in uh, good old Northern Ireland, <laughs> um, especially as a child of the eighties, I never thought that I would see or meet, uh, the people in the movies that I grew up loving. So it like blew my mind, but the whole thing about going over to a table with a celebrity there whose movies you've watched over and over and over again, and then talking to them initially was like, hi. <laughs> But as I went to more and more uh, conventions and I apply some adult drinks, it becomes easier and easier. What does it? Right? But I must say that everybody that I've met has been at least civil and usually super nice. I have not had a bad experience meeting a celebrity. Who was your favorite celebrity encounter? So favorite as far as... No, no, as far as no qualification. No, well, well, well. So you could say favorite, as in who is the person that I most wanted to meet, compared to who did I have the most fun with. I'm going with the second one because I already know the first one. So I will say, and I, you know, I have to go back through going to this convention twice a year for ten plus years. Um, I, I've had a lot of fun with a lot of celebrities, but. Probably uh, the cast of Day of the Dead, 
were super nice. Um, I was there by myself. Um, and they were so, like, they were all super engaging. They love talking. And like, even as an introvert, they were like, you know, bring me in and like, Hey, this is awesome. Um, also the cast of cannibal Holocaust was amazing. Um, the, the what? Isn't there a scene in that movie you hate because of a dog? A dog? No, no, no. They kill like a whole bunch of animals, not a dog. Oh, I thought it was a dog. So, Ruggiero Diodato, who's the director, he's like a short, he's not really old, or whenever I met him, obviously he's old then. Um, but he was super nice, but he doesn't speak English. Oh. So, he had his granddaughter there translating. Oh. Um, and um, also another uh, one of the actor actresses is Italian, but she kind of spoke pretty good English. And the other guy was an American, and he was just kind of going off on his experiences on that movie, which were not pleasant. Uh, but they were all super engaging. Um, Jim, how about you? How about me what? What, what are your favorite um, experiences or celebrities? I would say, honestly, the one that shocked me the most, and not for any reason, but just how warm and welcoming she was, was Veronica Cartwright. Like, she was so nice and so approachable, and um, also Jennifer Rubin, because when we got here, we came on a Friday, because we had a three-day pass that year, and we walked into the autograph room late Friday night. Well, it wasn't that late. It was right after they opened on Friday, and she walked up to us and started talking to us. We, we didn't go over to her her table or anything until I told her, okay, I want your autograph. So we walked over to the table and that was, I thought that was pretty amazing. So I have to shout out to Alex Vincent. He is here today. Who has been here every single time that I've went because he lives very close to me in Florida. And he is always super down to earth, super nice. Um, and he chats like, I'll just walk past and I'll just say, hey, Alex, and we'll be like, so yeah, that, that's always cool. Funny story about, I told you my Alex Vincent story earlier. Right. I was here one year, um, the entire cat, they had a bunch of people from Alien, the Alien tr um, trilogy at that point, I think, no, it was a quadrilogy, whatever, but they had a bunch of people from Alien here, and Brad Dorif was sitting next to yes. Alex Vincent, and I was in line to see Brad Dorif, not knowing I was chatting with Alex Vincent. And the funny thing is, so I was there, and I and I remember who was there in that area too. So it was Veronica Cartwright, mm -hmm. she was super nice. Yes, Tom Skerritt, who was never at his table when I wanted his autograph. So I had heard, you know, you hear like stuff online about people who meet celebrities and stuff, and people who can be assholes. Tom Savini sometimes brought up. I've never met him. He's been there a bunch of times, but I've just had different priorities. Um, but Tom Skerritt is sometimes raised as somebody who's like a bit of a dick. He was uh, super nice, like super nice. And it was Brad Dourif and then it was the guy from Ghostbusters. Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson. Um, so yeah, so I yep. remember going down yep. that, that, that kind of line. So, yeah. But um, when I got to Brad Dourif, I could not speak. I, I completely clammed up and I have no idea why. And as we've talked about, the only person that happened to me was um, John Carpenter. Which just, is... Just because he's my favorite director. Uh, not to say that he's... Every movie he's made has been a classic, but his, like, from Halloween through to In the Mouth of Madness, like, 95% of those movies are absolute classics. Yeah, agreed. So, so he was great. Who was the first person you met at a convention? First celebrity. I'm trying to. Th well, at a convention or first celebrity in no, general? Not at a convention, not just bumped into or so, did their laundry. Actually, I think it was Jennifer Rubin. That was the first year we came. I'm, I'm fairly certain it was that year. That was the first year we came, and she was here that year. Uh, the first person I met was Lawrence Harvey. Well, you don't know who Lawrence Harvey is? Uh, I don't think I do. He was the um, star of Human Centipede 2. 
Oh. Which is which, one of my favorite extreme movies. Which I have not seen. But he's great because he dressed up the way his character did. Oh, okay. Um, and not many celebrities do that other than for like photo ops and right. stuff. But yeah, he was the Luke totally in character and he's you know, he's from England, so you know it was maybe a little bit easier for me to meet him than an American who's from there, so I could talk about like British stuff. Uh, but yeah, he, he was awesome. I thought you were from Northern Ireland. Yes, Northern Ireland is part of Britain. Do I have to give you a geography lesson? No, 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 no. But I, I, I just being a wise ass. Well, not really. Well, right? I, yeah. I mean, it, it is pretty much the same, but it's still not Northern Ireland. Anyway, okay. Brenda? I have a question, actually. Okay. So, this is for both of you guys. As a newbie, what has changed or what is different from when you guys first started coming to what's now? Because I see the now and I love it. But I can also see there's a lot of potential where a lot of more cool stuff can be integrated, given I don't run the place. But, you know, I would see some new stuff coming in. What did you guys see that is so different now or, or is better or has evolved? Honestly, the convention for me, for as long as I've been coming, is pretty standard. The only thing that's really changed is the venue. And I'm going to be honest, I don't like this venue. Is it bigger? It, this is way too big. And, and it's not set up. It's not set up with a good flow, in my opinion. The convention's great. Like, the, the guests are fine. Um, the, the vendor rooms are fine. It's really nice. But it's just too big and, and too confusing to find your way around. Mark? Uh, okay. So the biggest thing for me is back in the day, um, whenever you went to get an autograph, it might have been 20 or 30 bucks. Now it's typically 60 70 bucks. Um Again, back in the day, you could take a picture with them, and that's they wouldn't charge you or anything. Now they have like this combo thing. It's like, oh, take a selfie. Uh, it's thirty bucks. Get an autograph. It's forty bucks. You know, do a combo. It's sixty bucks. Back in the day, it was like twenty, thirty bucks. Get an autograph. Get a selfie. Um, but it's a big, it's a big money making machine right now. Which you know, I don't blame them. Um, to a certain extent, but I know like Adam Green and there's certain like Guillermo del Toro go to conventions and they sign stuff for free because they just want to interact with their fans and they don't see it as a money making thing. Uh, but you know, that's not to say that I don't understand people charging because yeah, you know, it's their time and it you know, takes a lot of time and effort just to sit there um and go through and sign stuff and go over and sign stuff but uh, that's been the biggest difference for me um i think as far as venues venues for this convention bounce from a smaller one in the summer to a bigger one in october i prefer the summer one but october is fine too um it's just uh, it, it feels a little bit more I feel the summer one is more for the horror fans, like the true horror fans, and the and the October one is more for like, oh, it's October and everybody's like thinking about horror movies, so it's more for like the general horror fan. Hang on a second. But I understand. I understand the the duality of both of them. I appreciate that they still do the summer one. Yeah. Well, I like, uh, I like, because... What I liked last year was the guys who were doing makeup. Ray, come over here. Oh, no, I'm not going to. What, like, what I liked last year was the guys that were doing makeup were right next to the people that were selling the makeup. So you could actually buy the prosthetic, sit right next door, and have them apply it to you. So you're already, you're already made up into a character for the rest of the day. And I have yet to find anybody doing makeup. And I'd really like to see... My friends do makeup because they're really, really good. That's so fair. That's the other aspect. I love like the the cosplay stuff. I don't dress up, um, but like some of the costumes are fantastic. They're Agreed. I'm sure they're phenomenal. And like some of the Q and A's are great. So it's not just like you go like for people who've never been to a convention. It's not like you just go into a room. There's just some people signing for for the convention we go to just signing stuff um, and then you, you go this has got a huge vendor room uh, with a lot of interesting stuff it is um, film festivals it's, it's got a lot for 
like a lot of people it, it also has a lot of times like kid zones too so if you're bringing your kids they can do stuff um Is, isn't this the first big one since the pandemic though no they did they did, they did one we last went to year. october last year did we okay. yeah because that's where mark and i met face to face okay that wasn't that big though that wasn't as big as this so so as far as uh, bigness. <laughs> That's not a word. That's fine. <laughs> as far as being in biggin. Um, That's a good word. Uh, yes, a Simpsons word. Um, yeah, I mean, for this year, as far as celebrities, this is by far the most yeah, it, that, that I've ever seen. So, what? what is it? So, I don't know if you'd call it a theme or not, but the big draw this, this time around was the massive amount of Twin Peaks cast that they got to come in. Well, right. Tom McLaughlin's here. Yeah, right. They, they usually do a theme where it's maybe the cast of Nightmare on Elm Street or the cast of Twin Peaks or the cast of, back in the day, Stranger Things right. and stuff. We came, um, we came one year and it was the Freak Show from American right, yeah, Horror yeah, Story. Yeah. That was phenomenal, what, just watching them walk into the, the convention. So but that was fun. great because that was a summer one yes. with the pool party and me and my wife were there and beside us the the cast was there, or some of the cast was there and they were just having fun in the pool and they had their kids and, and whatever so they were just hanging out with us. Um, for this convention they also have like a VIP party right? Um, where you can kind of mingle and have a few drinks with you know the some of the celebrities but I, I think I don't know to me it's like a mini vacation and the vibe is always awesome like I've never had any issues with the people everyone's super friendly because again it's, it's almost mixing with a minority right <laughs> you're, right you're you're all one you're with your people right right it's family right um although you know I it's not like they're my brothers or sisters <laughs> but you know you I would hope you, not because my brothers and my sisters some of us don't get along <laughs> but but especially I mean I haven't gone to a comic con or anything but I'm I'm a I big have. comic fan comic movie fan and I'll go to one eventually but I'm more of a horror fan mm-hmm. so because this is twice a year and with autographs going up in price and everything else I kind of save my money for these couple of times in the year uh, to do conventions. So that that's one thing that I appreciate about these two is the um, the vendors, because you you find some really neat stuff that you don't see anywhere else. Yeah, um, I I like looking at the vendor stuff. My wife's more of a buyer of the vendor stuff, um, but there is some really cool cool stuff out there. There is. I, I tend to save my money more for like the celebrity stuff, and signing posters and. and shit. I do too if it's a good year. I'll, I'll budget for it. But this year there was there were a few celebrities that I I would have wanted an autograph from, but nothing nothing that was like oh my god I have to, you know. So I'm gonna go through some of my signings. Okay. So Frankenhooker, have you seen Frankenhooker? I have. So I got an autograph from uh, Patty. I don't remember her last name. Who played Frankenhooker? Um, and she doesn't really do uh, conventions, so it's pretty cool. Uh, Return of the Living Dead, a movie which you have not seen. Correct. Fucking weirdo. <laughs> uh, so I've got like four um, signatures, Lene Quigley, um, and a bunch of people on there. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, a mind device, super nice. She, she looks great for her She does. I, I've seen I've seen her do interviews. She looks amazing. Yeah, Heather Lyonclamp. Uh, of course. Mother. Uh, who was it? Oh, Ronnie like, Blakely. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bruce Campbell, I, who had super long lines, and he was just like, "Hi, how's it going?" Sign bye. So, see, I met Bruce Campbell, but we went to a a comic book store in Orlando, where they had a book signing when his Hail to the Chin book came out. Yes. So we got to meet him. He didn't really speak too much, but he did come out and and do like. Some a few minutes on the stage with a microphone, right? Fucking hysterical. The dude was awesome. Yeah, just it was a it was one of those uh, people like Robert England who mm-hmm. was like it's it's an assembly line, right? Of because there's so many people wanting to see them, they're right. just like, hey, hi, 
bye. Oh, hi, bye. They're just a huge show. Like, it's amazing. Um, so Hellraiser, um, Ashley Lawrence, uh, Nicholas Vince, Barbie uh, Wilde, and Doug Bradley, and Clyde Barker on one poster. I'm, I'm, I'm a little jealous of that one because I haven't been so to any... Point. I haven't been to any of the conventions where they've been there. Yeah, and Clyde Barker was a real treat uh, because obviously he's had some health issues mm-hmm. recently. So, you know, he was he was you know in a kind of a wheelchair and stuff. But now he, you know, you see him with um, the new Hellraiser coming out. He's been to a couple of the screenings and he's he's been up. So, um, <laughs> one of the, one of the most uh, like I love kind of random ones. Right, the guy that played Godzilla. And oh, yeah. the Godzilla <laughs> movies, including Final War. And, you know, he signs it in Japanese. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. Um, and so he, he was awesome. And he, he kind of spoke broken English, but he was, I was... Again, you were taking a picture and they didn't cost anything else. And he was all like, do the... Ah. So <laughs> there's a picture and he's like, ah, and I'm like, ah. Yeah. So, um, uh, Exorcist, uh, Linda Blair. Super nice. Really? My wife bought a um, t-shirt from her because she does like uh, wildlife people, rescue. Yeah, um, she does all kinds of animal rescue. She's super right. involved. Uh, she Day lives in Ocala. Oh, really? Somewhere, somewhere in northern central Florida. Yeah. Uh, Day of the Dead. Again, I talked about that's one of my favorite experiences. Another movie I've never seen. Gary Clark um, has passed away, um, and he was one of the. He was so sweet. He was like one of the nicest people I've met. For like, you know, you meet these people for maybe five, ten minutes, but he was like, hey, come take a picture. And he's all like, bring everybody around. He was like awesome. Uh, Alien, Veronica Cartwright. Of course. And um, Tom Skerritt. Awesome. Both of them. Very nice. Uh, Exorcist 3, Brad Dourif. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I got him when he was here for Alien. Brad Dourif? Yeah. Alien? He was in Alien Resurrection. Oh, okay, I, I see. Um, you just said Elliot. <laughs> so it's funny because, like, you know, they have, like, their, not their handlers, but they have people there to help, you know, with... Do their stuff, their yeah. assistance, right. essentially. And, you know, I was talking to her because somebody was talking to him for a while, and she's like, so what do you want signed? Is it, like, a Chucky thing, or is it, like, something else? And I'm like, no, I want Exorcist 3. Um, and she's like, oh, that's awesome. She's like, people tend to fall into categories when they meet Brad. It's like, they're either like super Chucky or, you know, one of his other Mariana movies. Right. It could be like Mississippi Burning or, you know, One Flew, Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. That's funny awesome. because when I met Jennifer uh, Rubin, right. she she was, uh, she asked what, what, she had a bunch of pictures laid out. She goes, which picture do you want to, me to sign? And I said, I love Nightmare on Elm Street 3, but could you please sign this picture from Bad Dreams? Mm-hmm. She's like, nobody ever knows that movie. <laughs> I do, Jim. <laughs> Me too. I do. It's a great movie. Anybody else in the room? Nope. Well, nope. it's very much like a Nightmare on Elm Street S. Kind of. It, that's the one she said she had really good lighting. Yes, that's yeah. the one where she said she had really good lighting. Okay, so I have John Carpenter mm-hmm. sign um, a thing poster. And again, John Carpenter, I was like, mush mouth. Um, my wife got him to sign a Halloween poster. Um, American Werewolf in London, I got that signed uh, by David Naughton. Okay. And he was, again, very nice. Burt Reynolds. Burt motherfucking I've, Reynolds. I've heard this story a few times. Who, you know, as I was growing up as a kid, Burt Reynolds was a big part of, you know, who I watched on TV. Well, yeah, he right? was everywhere. It's, it's Smokey and the Band mm-hmm. and, and, and a lot of that stuff. Deliverance. Um, sure got a pretty mouth. one of the ones that you could say is, you know, a international superstar that yes. doesn't really fit into a horror convention. Right. You could say Deliverance, but, you know, he's more known for his 80s action movies and stuff, so yeah. it was just fun to meet him. And they had, like, uh, the car from Smokey and the Bandit there. Oh, nice. Um, and I got a commission. So they had this commission poster. Oh. Where, where did it go? Uh, shit. And to his aid. 
Uh, you see this? Oh, nice. That's I, that's I, the I, artwork I, your wife. I think your wife showed us that yeah. when we were walking around. Um, so he was super cool. Um, so also Matt um, Tobin Bell from Cell. Okay, yeah. He was another kind of assembly line. He had like people in front. Oh, what do you want to do? Uh, but he was very nice. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, three. I met. I was here that year. That's that's the year Jennifer Rubin was here. Right, but it was the kid who was a wizard master. Will, Will, yeah, yeah. I forget his real, I forget the I, actor's name, but I, yes. He was real nice. Cause he, he was. He was, he was like, are you going to the VIP party? I'm like, no, like, I don't pay for that stuff, so. It was weird that he asked me. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why are you asking me if I'm going? <laughs> I just met you, but that's Th- That was also the year I met Mickey Corey, because he was there that year, even though he was in Nightmare 1. Right. Um, Hatchet 3. So I got uh, Kane Hodder and Danielle Harris. Oh, okay. And Kane Hodder is <laughs> super funny because he strangled me. He does this at conventions yeah. where, you know, if you want to take a picture. And again, but back in the day, the, that picture was free. Right. So he'd be strangling me. And dude was strangling me <laughs> <laughs> for, for the picture. He wanted a real reaction, damn it. <clears throat> uh, Lloyd Kaufman. Why do I know that name? Right. So, um, he is the head of Trauma. Oh, okay. The director. So, Toxic Avenger. Toxic. Uh, he, he was super nice, too. Um, we had this uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, uh, jealous. By the Chiodo Brothers. Nice. This was their original artwork. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Um, That's so, that cotton candy thing you asked what it was from. Okay, I got it. So all of them were awesome. And, uh, you know, they were talking about how um, they were maybe trying to do a, like, TV series and this and that. And they're they're working. A PC game is about to come out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. It, it's, not, it's going to be in the same style as, like, the Friday the 13th yep. one. Uh, but Killer Clowns from Out of Space is coming back big, big time right now. Yeah. Um, Sid Haig, R.I.P. Yes. Um, met him. He was barely coherent. I felt really bad for him. I've I've not. I'm not a fan of his because I don't I don't enjoy the movies he's been in. Oh, he's but he's so you can have a bad movie, but and even bad di- dialogue, but the actor is great. Yeah, I don't have anything against him. It's just I'm not a fan of of his movies or any of the roles I've seen him in. So. I, I he's not he was not oh, a draw for me. Sid Haig has been great in, um, in a lot of a lot of different movies. Um, Michael Bean. Oh God, I'm jealous. Uh, from Aliens yep. and Terminator, etc. Yep. Uh, he was like just very quick. Uh, Derek Mears. Derek Mears, right? No, no, no. So he played um, Jason in the remake. Yep. But he also played Predator, um, Swamp Thing, different characters. Is he uh, is he, he as big as Kane Hodder? He's much taller. Is he? Yeah. Um, and he he was super super nice. He's in fact like his main gig is being in like a comedy mm-hmm. uh, troupe. Um, and he's real nice. Uh, Tony Todd. Tony who? Tony Todd. Todd, yes. From Candyman. Yes. Very nice. Um, that's that dope. voice. That's dope. When you saw, when you showed me the picture, I was like, okay, <laughs> I know who it is. Uh, what's his name? From. Oh, that's um. Oh my totally, god. Uh, Danny. Da- Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo. <laughs> Danny Trejo. Yeah. Yes, he was very quick. He was nice enough. Uh, Ken Foray, who was here this. Convention 2, Dawn of the Dead. Never seen it. From Beyond. I don't know if I've seen that one. You've never seen it? No, I'm not saying I've never seen it. I don't recall it off the top of my head. Uh, He was in the, which you won't like, but you might have seen, uh, Halloween. um, He was in The Devil's Rejects and the Halloween Rob Zombie one. I I saw the first Rob Zombie Halloween and I never saw the second one. Uh, okay, we've done that one. Tom Sizemore. 
Oh. <laughs> I do know who Tom Sizemore is, yes. Yes. Um, so The Relic is... Garbage. Uh, it's a garbage film, no, no, sir. No, no, no. Let, let's not go down that road again. The Relic is a really good movie. It is not as good as the book. But That's because they wrote movie. out the main character of the book. I understand, but he is DaGosta to me. I could see that, yeah. Um, I still love that movie. I think the effects are great. I think the general story is still there. Um, yeah. I, I Okay, so let me say this about that. The movie itself is not terrible. It's just not a Pendergast movie. Well, it's but not it a is Pendergast a, movie. But it's a Pendergast book. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, pause after the one. Okay. Right after the one. Okay, good. Okay. There we go. Ray knows Lance Henriksen. No, I don't. Yes, Ray. you do. I do? You do. I do? Who you do. Uh, he was in Millennium, the show Millennium that you liked on Fox. He's the main guy in Millennium. He was the he was the dad in Pumpkinhead. He was the robot in the Alien movies. We watch TV, and I have to ask him who's that person, <laughs> and then he has to IMDb it. So, so yes, Lance was super nice, near dark. Yeah, like so, in Piranha Two. Yep. Uh, the Omen Two. Pumpkinhead. Like, Pumpkinhead so, is his best role ever I, to me. He told a real funny story about uh, Piranha Two, which is James Cameron's first uh, directorial movie oh and um, how they had like the producer was just a fucking dick <laughs> and they were just like oh we don't care just do whatever um, I met um, Oliver Robbins I think is his name oh He's, from Poltergeist yeah the son in Poltergeist Robbie um, I had a Poltergeist t-shirt on which was like um, Buena Vista is that the name and it's, I'm like, look. Casa Verde. Uh, uh, Casa Verde. Casa Verde, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. And um, it's a Florida thing. Yeah. Vista. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'm like, he didn't even notice, like, my T-shirt because it's, like, the, low, low-key horror T-shirt. The picture of me with Heather Lane Camp, I'm wearing a, It's. it looks like the, the logo for The Nightmare Before Christmas, but it's Freddy. Okay. On yeah, the, yeah. On the, in the place of Jack. And I didn't even notice. I, I, I didn't even think that I was wearing it when I took the picture with her. I love low-key horror shirts because then if somebody compliments me on it, I know they're a real hard nerd. Right. What, what shirt am I wearing right now, Jim? It's a Fulci shirt. It looks like oh, Chef Boyardee. It? it looks like Chef Boyardee. But <laughs> whose face is it? Isn't That's not Fulci? That is Fulci. Okay. And it's... Authentic Italian gore, gore, yes. and I've had a, two people call it out today, and I'm like, yeah, you know your horror stuff, and Jim now knows a little bit more about horror because I've educated him. Senpai. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Senpai. <laughs> uh. Okay. Um. Shannon. Oh, what's her name? Uh, From Thirteen Ghosts. Yes. Yeah, Elizabeth. Shannon oh, Elizabeth. Uh, Shannon Elizabeth. Yes, so I met her and on her, uh, you know, they have all the photos. Yeah. Some of the photos were face down because there were like nude ones yeah. of her. And I swear to God, that woman who at the time I met her was 47, I think. So our age. Right, but this was a number of years ago. So I was like maybe, it was, I was maybe 43. She is the most uh, natural beauty of a person that I've ever seen. Like, it was amazing. Like, 47, she looked like 25. Wow. Wow. Like, and, and she was, like, super sweet. Um, Alex Vincent, obviously, you've met um, all the time, lived near me. Uh, so Alex, if you're listening and you want to come on, just just let Mark know. Yes, yes, if you're listening. Uh, okay, who else? Uh, oh, what the fuck do you call him? Out for justice. Uh, he was in Devil's Rejects. He was like the sheriff. No idea. Oh, Jesus Christ. Let me see a picture. Okay. You won't know him because I. He's from. I, Oh, I know the actor, but I don't know his William, name. William, oh, Jesus Christ. 
Yeah, I know that. I know his face, but I don't Round know his name. For justice. Pardon us while Mark Googles. Uh, William Forsyth. Okay. And he was real nice. Um, I uh, like. I love Out for Justice. I don't know if you like martial arts movies. Not so much. But that. Unless that, it's Barry Gordy's Last Dragon, that was pretty hot. <laughs> That was great. Lawrence Harvey, I've, I've already talked about, and um, Devil's Rejects, dude. Why am I for blanking on all these people's names? <laughs> uh, Bill Mosley. Oh, yeah, um, Bill Mosley. He, he was nice, but he was kind of like, I don't know, kind of like, oh, hi, bye. Mm, I think we had more time to talk. Um, but he was just like, whatever. All right, who else do we have here? Okay. Uh, <laughs> who is that? Ugh. Jennifer Carpenter. Jennifer Carpenter, mm. who is a really, really good actress. She's really good at making me not like her characters. And she was super sweet. I, I've heard that, I've heard that, but I... Re- I hate her character in Dexter. I, I was rooting for... But that's for, her character. That's not her, though. I, I rooted in every season for him to kill her. Every single season, I hated her. Jeez. Oh, and same thing in when she was... Was it Wreck that she was in? Quarantine. Quarantine. Same thing. I was so happy when she died. <laughs> she did a good job. She did. I told you. She's very good at making me not like her characters. Um, I also got... Um, because it was cool, because normally you get just like, you know, uh, they have just photographs or posters on their table. Uh, Warrington Gillette, um, who played, um, Jason. Okay. Um, in Friday the 13th Part 2. Okay. Um, he had these machetes on sale. Oh, wow. That he signed. That's nice. And this was actually the 40th anniversary of when... Friday the Thirteenth Part Two came out. Oh wow! Almost to the day, it, it might have been to the day. Um, so he was super cool. Um, I don't. Uh, I met the guy from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, who's a hitchhiker guy at the mm-hmm. start. Uh, he was nice. Um, Clint Howard. Clint, why do I know that name? Clint Howard. Who is brother? Uh, uh, yes, yes, yeah, okay. Howard. Yeah, I can picture him now. Yep. Tix? Yep. Yeah, he was real nice too. So you wanna you wanna know two of my favorite um, people that I met? They were not here. They were not I didn't meet them here. At my last job when I worked on uh, the casino ship day cruise, I got to meet um, oh my god. Vernon Wells. Yes. Who was in uh, C- commando? Mad Max. Or, no, but he was in command. He might have been. I, I don't know. I, I knew him from Mad Max. And then I got to meet Jade LaRose from Repo the Genetic Opera. Never seen it. <laughs> Amazing. You but I'm, seen I'm, it? No, I'm straight. Oh my gosh, uh, whatever. We're <laughs> 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 listening to it on the way home. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fucking great. Like the, uh, Sarah Brightman, the original Christine from Pim of the Opera, is in it. Um, yes. The guy that played Giles, Giles from, from the Buffy the TV show. What's his real name? And Anthony Stewart Head. And it's um, guy from uh, Doogie Howser, right? No. No, he's no. not in it? No. no. Um, oh, what's his name? Paul Sorvino is in oh, it. Oh, okay. He was here studying autographs. What am I thinking about from Doogie Howser? He did like... Neil a, Patrick Harris? Yeah. He's been all over Broadway. No, all over he, it. But he did something similar. Oh, I don't know. Hedwig and the Angry Edge. Oh, yes. He did Hedwig and the Angry Edge. Um, okay, let me just run through my last few, and then um, we can let Ray talk. Uh, <laughs> D. Wallace, we both we met. We both met, yep. All three of us met last yep. time, uh, which I got, obviously, The Howling, because I'm a horror fan. And, and I got? E.T. No. No. Cujo. Cujo. Um, so, today, um, I met... Uh, D.B. Sweeney. I do know D.B. Sweeney. From Fire in the Sky. Great Howard, movie. Howard Sherman, uh, who played Bub in uh, Day of the Dead. Never seen it. Who? Now, Bub is probably... I do know who he is, though. The most likable zombie. 100%. Like, but you haven't seen it. 
No, but I know who Bub is. Um, uh, Derek Riggs, I think, um, who does the uh, artwork for Iron Maiden albums. Oh, what's, okay. your, what's your favorite Iron Maiden song, Jim? Right? I honestly cannot. I have to look it up. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. My brother listened to it when I was a kid, but I, I could not. Oh, wait. No. No, that was quite right. I can't think of any Iron Maiden songs. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, and Jason Patrick, who I didn't meet, but my wife met. Of course. Um, the only other people that I don't have on my phone, I think, um, I met Zach Galligan. Oh, yeah, from Gremlins, yep. Who I had signed uh, a video or a DVD thing of Waxworks. Ray, come tell us your Heather Langenkamp story. No. Heather Langenkamp, yeah. But she was, I mean, she was, I was talking to her, and Jim was kind of dumbfounded, and I'm a hairdresser, and she was talking about something to control her curly hair and the humidity. I'm like, well, I know exactly what you need. And I went to my shop the next day before we came in, I bagged her up some stuff and brought it into her, some little bag of hair care products. She was really cool. She signed a picture for me that I hope Ray was here to style my hair. I wish Ray was here to style my hair before Freddie gets me. But the funny thing is how we met her. Ray, the first day we were here when I got her autograph, Ray was wearing a t-shirt he had bought that said IMATS. Oh, IMATS, yeah. And oh. she's walking through and somebody whispers in her ear, the IMATS people are here because it's an international makeup organization. And finally, when we get up there, she says, she looks at Ray, she goes, are you with IMATS? And he said, no, I'm a hairdresser. I just bought the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's funny. Who else have I met? Debbie Roshan. She was real nice. Don't know who that is. Um, she is in like Tromeo and Juliet. She like stars in a lot of the trauma movies. Yeah, lower budget. Um, one she came out with a movie recently over the last few years called Killer Rack <laughs> about a uh, woman I, who Killer Breasts. Yeah, I, I kind of got that. I got the the pun. So that has been my kind of awesome experience at conventions, meeting a whole bunch of people that I never thought growing up that I would ever meet. That's how it felt when I met Dee Wallace. It, it was amazing because in when I was growing up, she was the mom that you wanted in every movie. And she hasn't aged. I mean, some of them, some celebrities have aged quite a bit, and some don't. It's she weird. looks. She looks amazing. Yeah, she she, she looks fantastic. Like um, I went uh, one of the conventions. I didn't meet her. Meg Foster. Mm -hmm. She got real old. Um, but, you know, she's still, you know, Rob Zombie had her in, like, 31 or, or one of his movies. I appreciate actors and actresses who look their age still being put into roles. Yeah. Because this, like, false, uh, you know, thing of, of, hey, nobody ages, or if you look too old, you shouldn't be in a movie, especially women actors, right? right. Um... I like, and in fact, uh, if we do what we watch, um, there's an actress who has gotten a bit older, um, but I just saw her in a movie, and it's like, great. I mean, it was a great movie, but I'm glad you're still acting, and people haven't just shelved you. I think well, You know, Dee Wallace is in a new movie. She has a cameo in Jeepers Creepers Reborn. <laughs> I hear that's awful. <laughs> that's what I hear, too. I didn't see What no. do you think about Victor Salva? I honestly can't say I'm a huge fan. You know what he did, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> can you separate the art from the artist, Jim? Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. I'm going to be honest. I, I, it's not always an easy line for me. Right. So he's a kiddie filler, right? Yes. Um, but wait, wait. What do you guys call it across the pond? A kitty fiddler? No, no. What do you, what, what do you call it? Uh, a pedo? Yeah, there you go. We say pedo here. Yeah, but but you pronounce things wrong. <laughs> um, okay. Ray is not looking very happy right now. Ray, I am so tired right now. I think we have He, he to overloaded on carbs and sugar today. I think oh. we have to wrap it up. Do you have any more thoughts about your experiences? Um... No, I've had a blast. I mean, I do have, like, I can ask a question. I don't know okay. if you guys want to answer it. Sure. Um, 
I want to know. Well, let me let me step back. From what I've heard, everyone in this room likes this convention for different reasons. You like it from what I see. It's just a whole experience thinking. You have your likes and dislikes. Mark doesn't like the prices going up, but he loves being a celebrity. So it seems like you're drawn because of the celebrity side more than anything else. Is that correct? I, I, I mean, nobody likes prices going up, but I understand it. Yeah. Um, but is I, it fair to say you come because of celebrities? You get to meet celebrities, right? <clears throat> yeah, that, that, yeah. Well, that, that's uh, your draw. Well, like, yeah. here's the thing, right? So in my mind, like even this year, even though they had a lot of ce- celebrities, there wasn't anybody I really, really needed to see, right? There was a couple of people that I wanted to see, but I look at it like a little vacation with people who are like-minded, Right. Um, so I get to go away from my work, the kids, the dogs, the fish, all of that, <laughs> and um, I get to have a little bit of fun time. Like people watching is great too. Um, there's some very interesting people at it, mm-hmm. but everybody's very chill and very nice. And I mean, I will continue going to this until I. I mean, I don't see why I would ever stop. Right, I agree. I agree too. And then Ray sounds like he likes the makeup, special effects kinds of thing, the artsy, if you will. Oh, and I love people watching. Who doesn't, right? Especially when you have a couple think, drinks. <laughs> and I think you know, even if you're just a uh, you know a general horror fan like Jim, there's a there's a lot of different experiences you can have here. And if you're a horror expert like me, you get a lot, you get a lot more out of it. <laughs> professional yes. i've been to other conventions like comic con and stuff like that and they're different than this but i, I have like a question this for you though. okay what are your favorite horror movies and why so halloween the original actually most original movies for me like the exorcist halloween chucky like the very to me the first horror movies that i saw when i was a kid those will always be my favorite i don't like all the remakes they're doing honestly i'll still watch them because they're just fan service at this point but i love those because when they those came out i was very small and chucky actually gave me nightmares for some reason it was the whole doll aspect but those as i grew up were my true horror if you will, like my true horror movies. And then after that, the movies that would come out after would never compare to those, like those true effects. If you, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't digital. It wasn't, it was like true, like spitting out blood and you can almost like see it. And it was just so cool to me. Now, when I see horror movies, it's all jump scares. It's literally just jump scares. And I don't have anything that I can compare to those movies. When I hear you guys talking about horror movies, half the time, I don't even know what you're talking about. But I literally have a list that I write down. I'm like, I gotta see this one, because they're talking about this one. So and I gotta see this one. What rec- what horror movie do you think I'll recommend? Martyrs. That's Martyrs. what you recommend everything. Martyrs. 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 It's a okay. French film. Okay. Right? Martyrs. It's French. Do not look... Don't look at um, any sort of plot synopsis or anything. Just go in blind. Martyrs uh, okay. by Pascal Louis-Jay, uh, I think it's 2009. French horror movie, I think, is the best horror movie ever made. I will check it out. Um, Jim, do you still haven't seen it? I, no, think I, we should, I think we should do a watch-along, because I'd like to see your play-by-play thoughts, because this is a movie that's full of ideas and it's full of right turns and it's full of hmm. misdirection okay and it's full of brutality okay um and it's full of great acting direction and everything else that sounds okay. like a good movie it is mind-blowing it blew my mind when i first saw it on uh, rewatches it still continues to raise to like through the roof okay absolutely that's fair i will absolutely watch that yeah, but that's did, that was did, just my thoughts. Did you get to ask your question? No, I was going to ask, um, what other conventions would you guys be willing to go to to compare this convention to? Because I was trying to head into, I've been to Comic Cons and I've been to other conventions that are not horror related. This one, 
and I know it's not going to sound fair, this one seemed a little sloppy. In the aspect of it could be better, it doesn't need to cost more money, they could have just organized it a little bit better. They could have maybe had so what, other things included. What do, you, what do you mean by that? So, again, it's not fair to compare it to other conventions because they're different types of conventions. But, yeah. for example, um, there's a Comic-Con that's fairly biggest in the Midwest up north yeah. in Ohio. Um, and it's called Colossal Con. And that one is inside a water park convention, which has another wow. aspect of it. I know. Um, but it's like a, you get a map, which we were given. Yeah. And the map literally tells you the rooms. And it's from the beginning to the end of the rooms you have the full experience. You start with the lobby, which is what we had here, right? You start with the lobby where everybody meets mm -hmm. and there's food and everything. And then you go to the next lobby and then you have what you would call the tattoo artist. And then you walk through there and then the, it's just like five rooms. And as you're going through, you literally don't feel like you've missed anything because there's shortened, condensed rooms with specific things. Someone can know exactly where to go for a specific thing versus this one. Everything's just smushed together. Well, what I feel like uh, with this type of event is that they don't like advertise as much some of the uh, things that are off to the side right like the horror trivia yeah which you know i went to last year or the year before which i really like um there's no uh, like there there should be people out there saying you know as you're coming in hey or as you're walking around hey over here um, we're going to be doing a Q and A mm -hmm. over here, but you know, I guess some of that's on you as you look at you know the program and say, well, what do I want to go to? But there's not a lot of signs to say over here for this or over there for that. So I I, I don't normally feel that that's needed when they're not in a space like this. I think that's, that's why I like the smaller. Camp. I think that this that's this like this venue was a detriment. Mm -hmm. to the experience what i will say is they've had this convention in this hotel mm -hmm. before and it's felt pretty vacant yeah. um, mm -hmm. just because it's so big and spread because out. like they have bands and stuff and mm -hmm. the bands that they have tonight are some of the bands that i love they have an iron maiden uh, tribute band and a band called werewolves we are wolves, we are wolves. <laughs> yeah. and I think both of those are great. Uh, but when they had it here, they had the same bands, but it was just so big and wide, and you mm -hmm. could get a drink, and you know, it's I don't know. I, I, I like the smaller ones because then at night you have a pool party where the bands are playing, and everyone's around a pool. Um, a couple of times it's been raining, so it's kind of like oh crap. But um, usually, everyone ran a pool in summer in Florida in a smaller convention. Um, it's just a lot more fun because you're in, you could get in the pool and there's bands playing and a mm -hmm. couple of drinks and stuff. Here it feels a little bit more corporate or something. But, you know, like you have to give props to this convention oh, PD. For, for me right because it, it, it was very it's a, it's not a court it's not a comic con it's not mm -mm. right it's it's right. Kind of it, 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 yeah yep. it's, it's a few people that started this yep. way P back in the day and it's just got bigger and bigger and bigger yeah um but you know as, as it's got bigger october horror oh yeah um a number of years ago what we did was we did uh, Spooky Empire in the Day, and then Universal um, Halloween, Horror, Halloween Nights. Horror Nights. Right, but that's very expensive. <laughs> it, it yeah. is now, but and we. Tiring. She had her first experience there this year too. Last uh, Saturday. Did you have front of the line tickets? No, we did not. But you got through a lot of the houses. Yeah, we got through five, five out of, of them. seven. Five out of seven that's houses. That's not bad because I hate lining up. I hate lining up. And I hate waiting for shit. You don't like <laughs> queuing. <laughs> I like the. That was a whole other experience, but I wasn't saying it was bad. Right. I enjoyed this a lot. I'm just saying there's lots of room for improvement, but I am very impressed with this whole experience. I mean, just the, the vendors. I love the way that they had the room set up just for, like, the famous people and you can line up. I liked that setup. I just feel for future, which I know will get there, it'll only get better, for future um, 
conventions maybe yeah. a different space or a different yeah, view uh, of things uh, yeah i mean I, there's there's i don't think any event will ever be great for everyone right right, right. right. that's true um and i and again i like the smaller one but mm-hmm. i would never not go to this one just because it's bigger and it's a little bit more oh, yeah. vacant and it's a little bit more confusing because i still find lots of enjoyment oh yeah doing other things oh yeah like things within it even if i don't experience all of it right um so yeah it is what it is it is i, I don't i enjoy it I, I do enjoy it i just don't like i don't like the venue personally because mm. it, everything's so spread out some of the stuff is hard to find like there were a few vendors i wanted to get back to i i don't know where they what are. i will say mm-hmm. is i get my steps in in the October. that is true that is true yeah <laughs> i mean i've got 11 11,000. I'm only at 8,900. I don't even want to look at mine. I'm a lazy ass. <laughs> but again, I mean, also, you know, people listen to this from around the world. This is, you know, we're talking about a Florida convention. Right. In October. So, to the, me, you know, you have to look at through some sort of lens as, like, the weather. Too. Yeah. I mean, there's people at the pool. My wife's at the pool. And, you know, you can just sit out there and it's nice weather, yes. too. So yes. there's, a, there's a lot of advantages to it. Oh, yeah. I mean, this area, there was like an upside down house down the street or something. Wonderworks, like yes. Is yeah. that what that was? Yeah. yeah I didn't there's a lot it. of international yes, drive there is. Yeah. Um, for people that want to do other things. And people fly here from oh, all yeah. over the world mm-hmm. um, just for this. Whereas you could say maybe some of the other calls in other areas. Yeah. Might, it's just you know, might might just be like <laughs> you know so cold you might just oh there's, yeah it's different there, yeah there's another horror convention that happens um called spookala that's yeah. about an hour and a half north of here i'm in, I, i'm thinking we might try hitting that next year yeah i mean want to see the difference in my head of hey things that you'd like to do hey I live in the Tampa Bay area. Right. Wouldn't be great to have a Tampa Well, didn't, Bay they moved them over to Tampa one year, didn't they? They did it one year. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but wouldn't be cool to have it in Tampa because that's a big area, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, I think Ray wants to go home. No, I want to get some of my friends to do makeup. Yeah. And it's already 6 o'clock. So, real quick... Um, do we want to do what we've watched? I've only got a couple of things. I, I have a book. I haven't really watched oh, much. Geez. Sorry. Is it the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> so the only thing I have for what we've watched or whatever is I got to listen to the third book, The Deadbeat Druid mm-hmm. by David Slayton. And he killed it with, with the conclusion of the trilo- the Adam Binder trilogy. It was amazing. He, he took characters through the entire se- you know, through the other two books that I hated mm-hmm. and made their um, made them sympathetic? He didn't make them sympathetic. He made them understandable. understandable. You could understand um, their motives and why they were the way they were. Hmm. They were still not good people, but you could understand and see why, why, why they became wrong. that way. Yeah. So backstories. Yeah. And and cool. I, it, that part of it amazed me. Because there's there's one character he has that's the villain in the other two books. And now you in this book you get to see why he became the way he became. He's still a villain, but now at least you understand. Like a Darth Vader. Essentially, yes. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. All right. What have I watched? So, um, so I watched, um, as I was mentioning, um, actresses who are getting older but get roles. So I watched... Uh, what's her name? Okay, Alicia Silverstone vehicle. Oh, the hmm. Requin or Requin, which is a shark movie. What? Yes. Okay. And uh, she was really good in it. She. She's a good actress. She has, like we all do, of course. And actually, I think. Like, I haven't seen her in a lot of stuff. Right. But I thought she was really great in this. She's, um, a, she's a good actress in general. I've never seen her do anything bad, poorly. Batman and Robin? The movie might have sucked, but she wasn't terrible in it. She wasn't a bad actress in it. But it's funny. Like, it makes like it makes me feel old. <laughs> old. Because, like, you remember her from, was it Clueless? Clueless? 
Yeah. As, you know, young, chair. Yeah. you know. And, like, I remember that. And now she's, like, my age. <laughs> and she... She... She doesn't look old. Like, she like she doesn't look bad. But she looks like a regular person. Right. Who was her age at that time. And... You, she looks my human. Age now, right? Uh, she, so, Imagine, imagine she's human. She looks right, like right. But, but sometimes Hollywood fools you, or you, you know, yeah, you get like yeah. a Tom Cruise, or even a Brad Pitt who looks slightly different. So you know. we just we had this experience at the last Spooky Empire we went to. Julie Benz was here, mm. looked unrecognizable until you snapped a picture of her, and then it's like, oh my god, that is her. Hmm. Right. So some people are very photogenic. Yeah. Um, Not to say she looked bad, but until like I would never have known her. But anyway, this movie was a bit of a train wreck. Um, like, as bad as The Last Shark? <laughs> you mean as good as The Last Shark? As good at being bad as The Last Shark. Shark's classic. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> um, so, this has her and her husband. Um, she has had a traumatic experience where... So she goes she hunting sharks? She wanted to have a water birth, but her child died. Um, and then you got, like, the water motif and, you know. So her husband and her go on vacation a little bit after that happened. And they're in things like Indonesia or somewhere like that. But it's like, you know, the Tahiti types of um, huts that they have in the water? Yeah. Um, so they're in that, but the storm comes in and pushes their um, hut out into the sea. Hmm. And then, you know, it's a struggle for, uh, you know, how do you get back there? We can't see the land anymore. Can't they just make a paddle? Uh, well, you couldn't paddle a hut. Why? Paddle the hut. That sounds <laughs> like a job on the hut. <laughs> They have to be on some sort of platform. A paddle would make them move. But no, you wouldn't be able to do that physically. Um, Are you sure? I'm pretty sure you could not swim on a large structure. Yeah. A paddle. Having a couple of paddles. um, uh, You know, no. I feel like it could be written so that it would work. But then it wouldn't be a movie. (laughs) (laughs) They would just paddle back to the shore and then just go on about their business. Um... There's some like below, <laughs> like sub power, par sci fi um, graphics of sharks at the start. I'm like, holy shit, this looks like something that was done in like 2001. Um, there's a lot of stupid character moves, uh, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, two out of five. It is okay. Not, it is not a good movie. She is good in it, and like I didn't even know she was in it. It was just like a random. Holy fuck! What am I going to watch to get through my ADHD of trying to figure out what to watch? Right. I just put it on. Okay. There you go. There we go. Next. Um, the other thing that I watched was Dario Argento's Dark Glasses. Dark Glasses. How was it? Which initially I put on, and I'm like. Hang on, they're talking Italian in this. Oh, I have to put the subtitles on. <laughs> you don't speak we... Italian? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what no is in Italian. It's no. It's no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you don't have to watch it with the subtitles then. I, I, I did take three years of Italian in, in junior high. I took two in high school. So you know what Tanabre means? No. <laughs> um, so, uh, Dark Glasses, Dario Gento. So his most recent stuff has been like shit, like utter shit, like Dracula 3D, where they had <laughs> like that was a, him. Oh my god! <laughs> like a, a CGI praying mantis that looked like shit doing like in a fiber, oh, whatever. Um, this one was very straightforward. Um, as far as a Argento 
I struggle even to call it a giallo because it is a murder mystery. Right. Um, but it has not got some of the hallmarks of what a giallo is. It's not yellow. <laughs> <laughs> why do they call it a giallo, Jim? Because it's yellow. What is? Why do they call it yellow, Jim? I have no idea, dude. Do you want me to explain it to you again? For the third time, please. Okay. So, in Italy, they had, like, pulp um, novels that came out that were very kind of exploitive, um, that appealed to the common man, right? So, it's got sex and violence in it, and it was done on a mass-produced uh, basis. Those books, because they were very cheap were printed on paper that was, like, yellow. Okay. Because it was cheaper to mass produce. Right. So that's the giallo. This one, though, is, like, surprisingly straightforward, um, especially for Argento. The direction is not crazy. The lighting's not crazy. The soundtrack is actually very good but like a lot of people associate Argento with Goblin as far as a soundtrack which is very kind of like nuts the soundtrack right but this is a, a normal kind of score but it's actually a very compelling score um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's a murder mystery about a woman who is being stalked by a guy, uh, we assume a guy, who has been killing hookers, and she's like Do, a high-class hooker. Does he talk like Donald Duck? He does not. Oh, good. Okay. Um, he may be watching a movie where a serial killer talk like Donald Duck. Fulci. Oh. New, York, New York Ripper. Um, Fucking awful. Go on. It's great in its own way, Jim. Um, in no way is it great. So she is being chased by this guy um, who's killing hookers, um, and sh- and he's in a va- like he's in a van and he's chasing after her and she's running away in her car. Um, he runs into the back of her um, and she crashes into another car and he like zooms away. So. The car that she crashes into has a family in it. It's actually a Chinese family in Italy. Um, and the parents are killed, but the son lives. Okay. I know, it's weird, right? <laughs> but it's not. A, it's a very conventional movie. Um, so, whenever she... Um, gets out of the accident, right? They, they bring her to the hospital. She's blind. Um, and eventually she gets a seeing eye dog. And it's all about her recovery. And she goes to like an orphanage where the kid is because the mother is in a coma. The dad's dead and she feels bad. So she goes to give him like a, a video game system. Well, he ends up knowing where she lives and runs away from, like, the orphanage type thing. It's, she kind of takes him under his wing. But the killer's still out there, and the killer still wants to kill her specifically. So the last third of the movie is basically a chase of her and um, the kid running away from this maniac. Um, it's... Like I said, it's very conventional for uh, an Argento movie. It could be an American movie. It's very emotional too because the you know the bond between the kid and the woman, the blind woman, um, is really well done, and the acting is pretty good in it. Um, yeah, I, I recommend this one. I okay. think it's accessible. Um, Shutter, right? Shutter, yes. Uh, apart from that. Hats of Dragons, I'm um, all caught up, um, and I think that's about it. Brenda, you got anything you want to talk about? Nothing. Okay. You haven't watched anything in the last week? Literally, no. She, she's... Well, guys, that's all for us. Have a good one. Bye. Uh, bye. Bye. <laughs>